Using a formula to generate a reference to a range of cells allows us to create references on the fly based on the shape of the data or criteria that we specify. Now, many Excel users know that the offset function returns a reference, but did you know there are actually eight functions that return references? In this video, I'm going to demonstrate all eight functions, but I won't have time to teach the functions in detail. So if there's anything you don't follow, please download the workbook for this video. You'll find the link in the video description and in the file, you'll find links to detailed tutorials for each function. Okay, let's get started. Offset is the most well-known function for returning a reference and rightly so, because that's all it does. For example, if I want to return the range of cells that contain the sales values, which is E4 through to E7, I'm going to start in cell A3. You can start anywhere as the reference, but we'll start in A3 and work from there. The next argument is how many rows from A3 do I need to move down or up before I get to the first row in my reference? Well, that's one row down because I only want the sales values, not the header. Next, we need to know how many columns across from A3 do we need to move before we find the sales column? Well, that's four, but if I use match, then I can reference cell B13 here, and now my offset function can automatically update if I want to change the column that's being returned. Now I want zero for an exact match. I'm going to close match, so that's my columns argument. And lastly, I need to tell offset how many rows high my range should be. I'm going to use count A for this and we'll count the number of rows containing years. And I'm going to extend past the bottom of the table to allow for more rows to be added. Now in real life, you're going to probably want to extend much further past the bottom of the table than I have here. Just allow an extra hundred rows than the number of rows you think you'll need and you should be good. I'm going to close count A, and then the last argument is width. I can omit this because I only want one column returned, but we'll put one in just for completeness. Close offset, and when I press enter, it's going to spill the results to the rows below. And that's because I have Excel for Microsoft 365 and dynamic array functions. If you have Excel 2019 or earlier, then you're gonna get an error here because Excel doesn't know what to do with the range returned by offset. So I'm going to copy the formula, except for the equal sign, and we'll reuse it. Now, because offset returns a reference, we can nest it inside of other functions that accept references. For example, we can sum the values. I'll paste in my formula, and instead of B13, I'm just going to change it to this cell here. And I need to close my formula for sum and press enter. And now I get the total value of the sales. Now, if we look at the formula tab and evaluate formula, you'll see that offset is actually returning a reference. So far, we've returned a reference to a column of cells but offset can also return a reference to a single cell, a row of cells, or a whole table. And it's this ability to return a reference to a whole table that makes offset popular for use in dynamic named ranges. For example, let's say I want to return this whole table here. Again, offset, I'll start in cell A3. I'm going to not move down any rows because I want to include the headers. So I'm actually going to skip this argument and then just enter a comma. How many columns do we want to move across? Well, I need to move across one column to get to column B. What's the height of this table? Well, we'll use count A to count the number of rows, this time including the header, and I'm going to allow for growth. Close count. And for the width, we'll do the same thing. We'll count the number of columns. I'll allow for growth. It's unlikely in this example that I'm going to add more columns to my table, but you may have a scenario where you're expecting to add more columns and this is where you'd allow for growth by counting past the range that you currently have. So that's my width argument for offset. And then all I need to do is close parentheses on offset, press enter, and it spills the results. Remember in earlier versions of Excel, you don't have these dynamic arrays and this ability to spill the results. So you would use this offset function probably as a defined name. And we can do that by simply copying the formula and then on the formulas tab, define a name. We'll call it product sales. 
And in here, I want to paste in my formula. I need the equal sign. And I need to absolute reference all of the references so that I can use this defined name anywhere in my workbook and it will always refer to these cells. So I'll click OK. Now, if I use the defined name, product sales, and press enter, it spills the results. But I can also use that if I wanted to, say, insert a pivot table, press F3 to bring up the name list. There it is, double click, and now I could create a pivot table based on that range. Now, the beauty of doing that is when I add more data to this table, it's automatically going to be included in that defined name. A lesser known function that returns references is index. In fact, index is a better function to use because it's not volatile like offset and it's far more efficient at calculating. We can return the same values with index starting with cell E4 and then use the colon operator and index to return the last cell in the range. So what array do I want to index? Well, this one here and I'll allow for growth. What row number? Well, I don't know how many rows I'm going to have. So let's use count A to count the number of rows that we currently have. Now you can use any column to count as long as it has data on every row you expect to be counted. Again, I've extended past the end to allow for growth. Now in this example, I'm only returning one column, so I don't need the column number argument. Press enter and the results spill. Again, in earlier versions of Excel from 2019 and earlier, you're going to get an error. So I'll copy the formula and then we'll look at the next example. So here, like we did with offset, we can nest index in any other function that accepts a reference. So here we get the sum of the sales. Now, did you notice that the first reference here is hard keyed? So it's always going to start this range in cell E4. However, if you also need that starting point to dynamically update, you can use index on both sides of the colon operator. Let's take a look. Let's say I want to find the reference to the sales values for bikes and clothing. So instead of starting with a fixed cell, we're going to use index to index this range and I'll allow for growth. What row number do we want? Well, I don't know. I want to find the row that bikes is on. So we'll use match to look up the range of categories and we want an exact match. So match is going to find the row that bikes is on and return the cell reference for that. So I'll close index. Now I can insert the colon operator and I'm just adding spaces so that it's easier to see. And again, we'll use index to find the last cell in the range. So we want to index the sales and we'll use match to find the cell that clothing is in. In the categories, we want an exact match. Close match, close index and press enter. So now we get the sales values for bikes through to clothing. If I wanted to change this, for example, instead of clothing, I wanted components. Now my range has updated accordingly. Now I should point out that index is not a volatile function, which gives it a huge advantage over offset. However, when index is used on both sides of the colon operator, as it is here, it will recalculate upon opening of the workbook. But once that initial calculation has completed, it's no longer volatile. Just like offset, index can also return a reference to a single cell, a column of cells, a row of cells, and a whole table. For example, let's say we want to return a reference to this table here. We'll start in cell B3, because I want the headers as well. And then colon, and we'll use index to find the last cell in the table. So the array I want to index is the sales table and I'll allow for growth. What's the row number? Well, we'll use count A to find out how many rows are currently in the table. And this time I want to count year as well. And the next argument is how many columns in the table? Well, there's four columns. I know I'm not going to get any more columns. So I'm just going to hard key the number four and we'll close parentheses on index and press enter. And we get the whole table returned. Now, obviously, in Excel 2019 and earlier, you'll get an error here. But the most common use for this is going to be as a defined name. Just like we did with offset, we can go to the formulas tab and define a name. I'll call this sales data just to differentiate it. 
and we paste in the formula. Remember to absolute all the references using F4 and click OK. Now I can reference that table either in formulas or in a pivot table. And if I add new data to this table, it's going to automatically be included in the reference returned by index. New in Excel for Microsoft 365 is the XLOOKUP function, which is the new improved lookup function to replace VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. But the great thing about XLOOKUP is it also returns references. For example, we can use it to return the sales values. So we're going to look up the sales label here in the row of headers and the return array, well, it's these values. We'll close XLOOKUP and again, the values spill for me because I have dynamic arrays. XLOOKUP can also return references to a single cell or a row of cells, but it can't return a reference to a table. So its use is somewhat limited. With the choose function, we can list several different references to ranges and with the first argument, specify which reference to return. In cell B13 here, I have a data validation list that lists the column headers from the table. And this will allow me to choose which reference to return. I'm going to choose match to return the index number by looking up the sales value here in the row of columns here. We want an exact match or we'll close match. And then all I need to do is tell it which column is the first one. That's this one here, which is the second one, third one and fourth one. Close, choose and press enter and it returns the sales values. It spills for me because I have dynamic arrays. I can choose a different column to return from the list and you see choose just returns the relevant column. A popular use of choose is to return references to non-contiguous ranges or even rearrange the order of columns or rows. For example, we can use choose to trick VLOOKUP into looking to the left. So here I'm going to look up the product types in this column here and return the category, which is to the left. Let's take a look. We're going to look up tights and for the table array, I'm going to use choose to rearrange the order of my data. So I want two columns returned. So I'm just going to create an array of values one and two inside curly braces. And then I need to tell it which is column one. Well, that's the product. That's what I'm looking up. And which is column two, the column to the left, which is the category that I want returned. So I'm going to close choose. That's going to return my table array. The column index number, well, it's the second column. I want the category returned. And I want zero for an exact match for false. We'll close VLOOKUP. And there you have it returning a column to the left of the lookup column. Now, if you have Excel for Microsoft 365, I wouldn't waste my time wrangling VLOOKUP to do this. Just use XLOOKUP, it's far easier. Or indeed, use index and match, which is probably going to be more efficient than using VLOOKUP like this. But if you need to rearrange the order of columns or reference non-contiguous columns, then choose is great for that purpose. The switch function is similar to choose, except it has a slightly different structure to its syntax and it can't rearrange the order of references like we did with choose to trick VLOOKUP into looking to the left. Again, I've got a data validation list here that has all the column headers. So we'll have a look at using switch to find the reference to each column. So the expression in this case is simply going to be the value in this cell here. So if value one is year, we want to return these values. If it's category, we want these values. If it's product, we want these values. And if it's sales, these values. Close switch and it spills the results. Again, we can choose a different column to return from the drop down list. Now, switch is new in Excel 2019, and you don't have dynamic arrays in that version of Excel. So you could do things like wrap switch in the sum function or any other function that accepts a reference and now it aggregates the sales values. Or indeed you could define a name for switch and use it in other tools in Excel. Now most of us are familiar with the if function, but you've probably never used it to return a reference. And we can replicate the previous examples using nested ifs. Again, cell B13 contains a data validation list with the column labels. So we'll start with if B13 equals year, then we want to return 
this column here. And now we need another if B13 contains category, then we want to return this range. And if again, B13 contains product, then return this column. If B13 contains sales, then return this column. Now I need to close four parentheses because I've got four nested ifs. Press enter and it spills the results. Obviously Excel 2019 and earlier are going to get an error there. You can do things with this formula though, like wrap it in sum and other functions that accept references or indeed define a name. Ifs is new in Excel 2019 and it's just a simpler way to write a nested if formula. So again, if this cell here contains year, then it's going to return these values. If this contains category, then return these values. If B13 contains product, then return this range. If B13 contains sales, then return this range. Close parentheses. You can see it's just simpler than the nested ifs, but essentially it does the same thing. Now in Excel 2019 and earlier, you don't have the dynamic arrays. So you'd need to either wrap this in a function that accepts references or define a name for it for use elsewhere. Now the indirect function returns a reference specified by a text string that you can type in. For example, let's say I want to return the range E4 through to E7. Notice I put it in double quotes, close parentheses. It's going to spill for me because I have dynamic arrays, but you can obviously wrap this in sum and it will add the results. Now the nice thing about indirect and maybe the only redeeming feature because it is a volatile function it's quite inefficient to use is that if I were to insert some rows above this table so let's just add a few rows notice now my indirect is returning what appears to be an error but that's because it's still referencing cells E4 through to E7. So indirect allows you to fix a cell reference and not respond to having rows or columns inserted above or to the left of the range being referenced. And of course the downside is that it's volatile and it's typically very inefficient for Excel to calculate. And with so many other functions that can return references, there's not many reasons to use it over and above a function like index. So, with eight different functions that can return references, you're probably wondering which one is best. Well, there isn't one that's best, but I'd say if you wanted to return a reference to a table, then I'd use index because it's not volatile like offset. If you wanted to return a reference to a non-contiguous range of cells, or you want to rearrange the order of columns like we did for VLOOKUP, then use choose. If you only need a single column or single row or a single cell, then XLOOKUP is super easy to use and very efficient for Excel to calculate. Now, if you don't have Excel for Microsoft 365, then I recommend you use index. Well, that's a wrap. Let me know in the comments if you have any clever ways of using these functions to return references. And don't forget, you can download the Excel file for this lesson, including all the examples covered in this video from the link here. I hope you can make use of these functions. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.